Priscilla, if they can hear me, that's your job, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, last time I was here, I really came up with a different presentation for you today. And it was about living your dreams, because last time I was here, we talked about visioning. And, you know, I was trying to force that message. And this message came to me. And it's not a typical message. Well, I don't know if it's typical or not, but it's about what happens to me when I'm preparing for you. And the message kept saying, lighten up, Becky. Just lighten up. <laughs> Life's too short to take yourself so serious, right? Have you all ever needed that message? Lighten up. And I was like, okay, so who's telling me this? And, and it was a message in meditation. Uh, Becky, this is Jesus talking. Lightening up is all through my scriptures. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is if you'll just look. So what happened is I started looking through the scriptures, and everywhere I went, I saw it lighten up. In Matthew 6, 25, 34, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you're going to wear or drink, or I'm paraphrasing this, about your body. Don't worry. It is not the lot is your life not more than the food and your body more than the clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap. They gather nothing into the barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more important than they? Can any of you by worrying a single moment add any single moment to your lifespan? Can you? <laughs> Does worrying get you anywhere? So Bob Marley's song came to my head. Don't worry. Be happy. It's all going to be okay. But how many times do we worry about everything? Like worried about what I'm going to say to you, like God's not going to show up with the song and a message, right? So then I looked at the beginning with Jesus in the temple when he was 12. So his parents went to Jerusalem, because they had to, and they went in a big caravan, right, to pay their taxes and make sure they're on the rolls or whatever. And then they leave, and they're in a huge group of people. And about a day and a half in, they look around and they're like, where's Jesus? Well, I thought he was with us. <laughs> they left him. They couldn't find him anywhere. How many of y'all have lost a kid in the, <laughs> or in the grocery store? It's kind of stressful. And you worry. And then you find them in the toy department just sitting there playing, right? So Mary and Joseph find, after three days, they find Jesus at his father's house. And what does Jesus say? And Mary's like, why have you done this to us? Haven't we all done that? You kid, why have you run away in the mall? What, what are you thinking? And Jesus says, lighten up, Mom. <laughs> Don't our kids say that? Lighten up, what's wrong with you? Don't worry. And he says, wouldn't you know that I was in my father's house? That God is the one taking care of my life? Can we learn about that? How many times are we the ones that are lost and we're here? Lighten up. Like that. Don't take yourself so serious, right? So there was that message. When he was 12, he's telling his mom, lighten up. And then he goes to get, he runs into John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist is out preparing everybody for the way of Jesus, right? And Jesus shows up wanting to be baptized. And what does John say? I can't baptize you. Have we ever said that? Someone comes up and they want you to sing. Y'all were like, I can't sing. <laughs> but didn't y'all just sing? <laughs> and what does Jesus say? Lighten up, John. Don't take yourself so serious. There's a plan here. You're here to baptize people in the water. I'm here to baptize them in the Spirit. So just do what you're here to do and don't worry about me. Right? 
Lighten up, John. Be your best you. I'm like, wow, that's kind of cool. It is showing up everywhere. And then the feeding of the 5,000, right? Jesus is so tired. And he just goes off by himself. He's like, I just got to have a break. Have y'all ever done that? <laughs> Especially moms and single dads, maybe they're out there. And I just want to go to my room. And then what happens? They follow me. I'm <laughs> hungry. Knocking on the door. And he's like, oh. And the disciples are saying, hey, Jesus, all these people are hanging out. They want food. They're knocking at the door. We need to let them go, right? And go buy things. And Jesus says, what? Lighten up. <laughs> Just feed them what you got. And they're like, are you crazy? We only have five loaves of bread and a couple fish, right? Have y'all ever done that? <laughs> Just give them what, it's not enough. Have you ever gone to a potluck thinking it's not going to be enough? There's plenty. So Jesus is saying, don't worry. Just give them what you got. That's true for all of us. Don't worry. Give them what you got. Because what happened is, when they gave them everything they had, they modeled for our life that we're giving you everything we have. So what did they do? They dug in their backpacks and pulled out all the snacks and food that they bought for their journey, and they shared it. the original Paula. <laughs> so when we share what we have, other people do the same thing. My husband was in HEB. He was buying a bunch of candy carts for the girls at work because he said, Becky, they're all single and they just don't have anybody. And, and so he's just everybody's Valentine, right? So he only had to buy 12 of these chocolate hearts. <laughs> and he gets behind a lady with three baskets full of food. And that lady's John the Baptist. Oh my God, you should be ahead of me, right? And he's like, oh no, you go ahead, right? Just, just do what you're here to do. I'm fine, I'm fine. So he gets up to the cash thing, and the cashier says, uh, yours is paid for. He's like, what? Well, that lady felt so bad that she took up your time. She bought your hearts. So he drops down 25 bucks, and he said, well, apply that to the guy, the person behind me. Uh -huh. So what happened? When we pay it forward, other people follow suit. Eureka. Lighten up. Lighten up. So then we go to the Pharisees and the scribes. This is really interesting. Because he's talking to the, uh, the crowds. I'll have to... Oh my God. <coughs> so then Jesus spoke to the crowds and his disciples and he said, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. Because... They tie up heavy burdens and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. Have we ever done that? I know I do. I put so many burdens on my kids and my clients, and I, I read that and I thought, oh, what are you doing? Are you practicing what you preach? Have y'all ever done that? <laughs> you lay the load on everybody else and you don't want to lift a finger? Are you a Pharisee or a scribe? Jesus is saying, lighten up. Make the lives of those around you easier, not harder. Lighten up. Isn't that a great message? Lighten their load. He said, do not be called master. You have but one master, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be your servant. So we have to lighten up our ego, our sense of importance. Let it go and make their load lighter. 
Interesting, right? So then we get to Martha and Mary. And Martha, I, I totally relate to this. You know, Jesus plops in for a visit, and Martha's busily getting ready because it's the Sabbath, and she's going to serve that night, so she's got to get everything ready for the Passover and the Eucharist and all this kind of stuff. And and Mary's just sitting down there on the right at the feet of Jesus, just hanging out and having a good old time. And what does Martha say? Jesus, do you not care that she's doing squat? Right? She's doing nothing. And I'm working my tail off. Have y'all ever said that? <laughs> at work, at home, anywhere, in the church, right? They call it an Allen on the Allen on salute. Oh, it's me. I'm doing all the work and no one's helping me. So what does Jesus say? Lighten up. Lighten up. <laughs> Light up, Martha. You are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. And he says, Mary has chosen the better part of it. But what he's talking about, what is he talking about? You only have to worry about one thing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will come to you, right? So let it go. I remember my husband and I love to entertain. And my mother does too. And and she's in heaven listening to me right now. So I don't know if I get struck now, this could be bad. <laughs> but before she had a party, she did not lighten up. I mean, we had to scrub the baseboards, you know, the around the door frames, you know, white, it was the white glove treatment, right? And we're all as kids saying, lighten up, Mom. <laughs> you know, your friends are coming here to eat your food, not to look at your clean. So anyway, my motto was always, I'm going to clean up after you. So if you want to come to my house, I'm going to make it real simple for me so that I can enjoy you. Because what would happen is when we were having all these parties with my mother, we were so exhausted. By the time our friends got there, we were all not happy. It's like, could y'all just eat and leave? Please, we're exhausted. <laughs> Have y'all ever done that? <laughs> yeah. So in my house, I would have people over, and it drove my mother crazy. So probably her name was Martha. She was like, don't you, you can't have people over there, there's dust on your floor, there's, I said, if my friends won't come here because I have dust, then they're, they don't need to come. Because what's more important is that when you get here, I'm available to spend time with you. So, we have to lighten up to be present when we have people in our lives. So the message is lighten up. Don't take yourself so serious. It's not that important. So then he's got the mission of the 72. So here it is again, right? And he says, before he sent them, he said, lighten up. Lighten up. <laughs> he said, go your way. Carry, this is when y'all are going to start choking, right? Carry no money purse. No bag, no sack, no sandals. Take nothing. <gasps> Lighten up. Lighten the load. He said, go do your business. Go cure the sick and eat what is placed before you. And you will be paid in kind. He didn't say reject payment. But he said, lighten your load. How many of us have so much stuff that it's really hard to, I mean, my husband and I, we started looking around and we're thinking the reason we don't go have more fun is because when we worked all week, we have to do the lawn. On the weekend, we did, I think, 12 loads of laundry yesterday. Because <laughs> we lightened up last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we lined up last weekend no laundry got done so now this weekend is catch up do y'all have that story <laughs> there's a really great thing on Netflix right now in a book called The Joy of Tidying Up have y'all seen it mm -hmm. it's by uh, what's her name Marie or Kim uh, 
Marie, Condu, 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 whatever. Anyway, we've been lighting it up with her theory, and it's all, when you release things, what happens? It releases responsibility, and you can lighten up, and you can have joy. So don't go keep buying more and more stuff. It just bogs you down, and you can't do what you're here to do, right? Mm -hmm. So in that message, Jesus said, lighten up. So in all of these messages, I could go on and on and on, where every time I looked at a new scripture, the message was, lighten up. Don't take yourself so serious. And when we lighten up, what happens? We laugh. And do you know there's health benefits to laughing? <laughs> It loosens the grip on it. When you laugh, I was watching, um, I guess, World's, uh, America's Funniest Videos. People are falling off, I mean, really hurting themselves bad. And we're all laughing. But even the person on the floor is laughing. Because when we laugh, it eases our pain. So when we lighten up, we ease other people's pain. And our brain works better. It creates feel-good endorphins and hormones when we're laughing. So if we can choose to be all serious and glum, we're going to experience way more pain. And in unity, we talk about what we think about, we bring about. So why not let's think about what we So with that, I'm going to give you this great song by Sean Madden. And he came through. Now this guy, I think he came here. He was in a red truck with a, uh, he built his own camper on the back of this truck and he spray painted the whole truck red. <laughs> and anyway, he lived in that truck and he went all over the country singing. And this song kept ringing in my head all week. And you can't help but hear it and just smile and love it, and it takes all of your worries away. So, Priscilla, go play that, and I'll close with this song. I'm not singing. <laughs> Whoa. Y'all need to say it. Whoa.